So welcome back friends to a beautiful winter's day on the homestead. A storm has moved in and the snow is dumping. I don't think that we're going to be doing any dirt biking today, but I've got some exciting things to share with you. Let's go inside and we'll take a look. It's a good thing Mrs. W isn't here. She knew that I was bringing you guys into the house at our curtain state. She wouldn't be happy. Everything, many things going on in the homestead. All right, so we are working on a project that I have been putting off and I thought I would surprise Mrs. W because she's going to be gone all day. And that is finishing up the stairway. Man, it's been unfinished for a long time. So we took the carpet off of it. Um, I hate to admit some time ago uh, with the intention of uh, finishing up the, the hardwood floor, or the hardwood, the fir floor. So there is the unfinished floor that I ran up and I've put the first tread on. And then there's a layer right there. So what, what we need to do today is I think I've got everything prepped is with the carpet off of these. We don't really like carpet. Um, it's when you live out in the country, it's hard to keep it clean and it's, you know, it's, it's not very healthy. It holds a lot of dirt, especially when you have animals and dogs. So we, we much prefer wood floors. So that's why we took all the carpet out when we came in. So what we're going to do here is to put, I've got this beautiful, it doesn't look so good right now, the CVG fur right there, locally cut. Um, that's all pre, I've pre-finished that we're going to put treads on here, replace the old ones, and with the fur floor on the, I guess you call these risers. So what I want to share with you is something, if you ever are doing this, you have to finish this stuff, right? And so this is a trick that I learned from my dad. You can take, I've got these one by 12s that I put on the side of the, the Wayne's coating that we put up. And by running these and cutting these in here like, like that, kind of like a stair jack, now we can run our treads tight up to that and we don't have to trim around them. It's a real clean way of doing it. So it won't, doesn't make sense right now, but uh, it will here in a minute. So let's go get our stuff together and get started and, and see how it goes. So since it's snowing so hard, we're going to have to kind of set up shop. We're going to go into the cold room. Oh, I still apologize for the mess here. We are in major transition here. So what we need to do is I've been doing the work in here because I can't do any of the cutting outside because it's, uh, because it's snowing. Just, I just love the snow. When I'm doing projects like this, I don't like to have the tools uh, too far away. I like to have uh, everything as close. I'd take as few steps as possible. It saves, it's a lot of walking. It's a lot of wear and tear on you all day long when you have to go so far to, uh, to get your stuff. So we'll take the, we'll take the stuff, the tools to the work. So we're probably going to want to use the nail guns. I don't have a dedicated compressor like a contractor style compressor. I just have the big compressor out in the shop. So if that's your case as well, what you can do when you're doing, uh, when you need to use air and get them other places rather than buy multiple compressors is this, this, I just found this stuff not very long ago. It's a, a small, the contractors are all using it. It's a small diameter hose. It's really thin and lightweight. It's actually translucent and it uh, comes in 50 or 100 foot lengths. You can get it anywhere, any box store, Home Depot, Amazon. It's very lightweight. It's not, it's not like shop grade, like this stuff you have to have in a shop. But if, you're just, uh, if you just need to run long runs, you wanna run out to your shop or you wanna be able to air stuff up or use nail guns in your house all the way upstairs, two, three story, uh, you can get a roll of this stuff and just tie it into your compressor and it works uh, really good and it's a, a good affordable way to do it. Speaking of air, when you're setting up your shop also, it just dawned on me, uh, what I, uh, one thing that's always nice to have is right at your entrance, right at the door where, where everything comes in, like where kids are gonna bring bikes or you're gonna pull your car up too if your wife needs you to air up the tire or anything, is to have a plumb in an outlet uh, for your air compressor with the quick attach on there. And then I take a bin right here, the Acro bin, and I put all my air stuff in there. So I got tire gauges and uh, tire weight tools and, and all of that stuff. Stuff, you know, all the stuff that you need for Schrader valves and all that right here handy and then a hook to loop up your hose. So then you're always ready to go and you can, you can uh, access your, your stuff. You know where it's at. So this room is our, well, we've actually turned it into our gear room. It was a, it was a carport and the previous owners 
uh, they covered it in and I think they were using it for a, I believe it was a weight room. We, we call it the cold room. When we first moved out here, we were so poor, we had no money. Well, not poor, poor is a mindset. We were broke. We had, we had a, a, never poor, but sometimes broke. Uh, we had, uh, we didn't have, uh, enough money to buy a refrigerator. So we moved in here in the winter. So it was so cold out here. It was unhe unheated. We would, um, have our, keep our food out here, uh, milk and butter and cheese and all that stuff. So, but now it's turned into a gear room so we can come in this way. Uh, like when we're all dirty or we we have a bunch of wet stuff coming home from skiing and not traipse it through, uh, Mrs. W's house. And then everyone has their, has their own spot. So we have, um, Jack's and, Mrs. W's, Mrs. W's running, and then my stuff, and then my firefighting stuff, and sleeping bags, and kayaking water stuff, and dirt bike stuff. So everything's kind of, even with all those cabinets, so it still seems to, that, uh, well, you just can't have enough cabinets here. All right, I'm going to show you a tool uh, that's going to make a, a big difference today that you probably haven't seen before that's uh, very simple but very clever. I'm going to show you that special tool here in just a second, but I've got a we got to cut a board uh, 36 inches uh, for it, and then uh, here I'll, I'll, we cut this, and then I'll show you what we're talking about here. Oh, no batteries. That's all wet too. Jack keeps stealing my my batteries charger, <laughs> flexible batteries. He puts it in the van for his uh, to charge up his. Uh, mp3 player and all that stuff all right it's snowing so hard out there that the contacts got all wet my goodness it's coming down even harder than it was when we were out there a minute ago we don't want to put batteries on wet contacts it could short circuit. All right, that ought to see us through. So here's a tool you probably haven't seen before. This is so simple, but so clever, and so, it just makes life so much better. So now in a perfect world, right, when we're cutting our stair treads, um, of course, everything is going to be uh, perfectly square, right? But in the real world, in this old house, uh, nothing is square, and each one of these treads is going to be completely different. Now, because we're doing it this way, we don't want to have to go and trim all, you know, cut miters, you know, a whole bunch of them up and down and follow the stairs like they used to do. We, if we can cut these tight and put them up against these skirts, then we're all done. Right? So you can see, so what this essentially does is that this is a, a one by four here, and it's got two ends that, that you can change the angle on. We put them up against the back of the riser there, push them tight, adjust each side there so that it fits perfectly. And now it's, it's nice and tight. Now when we slide this out, we can take this and use this as an exact, and transfer the lines onto our tread and get a perfect fit every time. That's the theory anyway. Let's go find out if it works. Poor mail guy showed up. The roads are so bad. Got some packages here. Let's see, what do we got here? Oh, finally. <laughs> this is something I put off for years. I, I should have done it a long time ago. Torque wrench. I finally got a torque wrench. <laughs> All right. Nothing like getting an expensive motorcycle with aluminum threads uh, that take a spree into action. So I got a torque wrench and uh, another thing I. These are, these are two of those things that you put off, I put off buying forever. Uh, a proper, a good a wheel brush. These are really good for cleaning uh, dirt bikes. And a chamois. You know, my, I think my dad used to use a chamois. You ever use a chamois? You know what a chamois is? A chamois is, uh, this one's New Zealand. New Zealand sheepskin. A chamois is supposed to be the, the thing for drying off cars. Uh, and not leaving watermarks, right? I've always wondered about that. I've never used one before. So we're gonna, we'll try that out. We'll see if that works here. So here, there it is. My first chamois. All right, we can go into the car detailing. 
car detailing business. What else we got here? I'm excited about that torque wrench. I had to, I had a, it was a hard decision. I had to debate whether to get the, the big half inch drive. You know, actually you just, you just need two, you need two of them. You need a half inch driver. What's this? What's this? Oh, dirt bike pants. So I told you, you know, I said it's been my old, my dirt bike gear was 10 years old, 12 years old. So uh, believe it or not, I can't fit in the old pants. Apparently I'm not a uh, 32 inch waist anymore. I'm sure that, I'm sure that they shrunk. Okay. Now here's a section of our finished tread. If we put our guide on here, match up the ends. This is going to give us our exact cut lines now. And look how far off that is. That's a, that's a true 90 degree cut on the end of that stair tread. And it's uh, not even close. That would be impossible, well, near impossible to line that up without this tool. Here we can do this on the same, on the other side. There we have it, let's cut it. <laughs> See how it works. I haven't actually done this before with this tool, but well, I, I, it makes sense. I think it'll work good. So this is a bit of a tedious time consuming process because we have to figure out the angle, right? So if you have a saw that has a, a laser on it, this one here, it doesn't actually have a laser. It has a, uh, just the light shines through and creates a shadow. If you don't have that, you, what you can do is you can just get it close and you can come down and, and touch the tooth on the line there, bring it back and see does it touch there as well it just takes a little trial and error All right, let's see how it fits. Shall we see if it fits? Well, we know it fits, don't we? Of course, I tried it before I turned the camera on. All right, so we're gonna glue everything down using a subfloor adhesive here, and then we'll be able to uh, run screws up through the bottom um, uh, to secure it and pull it down into the glue. That way, we've got a nice, clean, stair with no uh, no nails or screws in it, right? All right, so it should go. And so here, so here, oh, that's nice, isn't it? Here we have a perfect, we have clean lines right there, clean there, this is already painted. This is already uh, finished, so all we have to do is, you know, where we scratch it, just do a little bit of touch up there, but, but that looks, looks great. Now, let's put the back on too. In the back we can secure as well. From underneath, I don't drip that on our finish there. This will prevent it, uh, definitely help to prevent squeaking. Now, and here's the problem, you know, when you, when you don't have that tool, it, uh, and what, you know, you cut these a little bit long and they, and they push out and then it just keeps on changing. It really is difficult right there. Okay. So this is a little bit low. I, this is, I, I wanted to, this is the, these are the boards that I had. It's a little bit low right here and which you won't be able to see it in the lower ones, but as you go up, you'll see a gap there. So I have a small cord around that I'll trim underneath there. That'll, that, that'll dress that up and it'll look, it'll look nice. But doesn't that look, uh, isn't that a nice, nice clean look? So I was hoping to show you the finished product here, but I ran out of panel adhesive. So we got what? Three more to go, I'll have to run down and grab. I thought, I thought it would grab, I was one tube short. But that turned out pretty good right there. You can see, uh, it's nice that everything's finished. It's not perfect. I, uh, 
learned a few things along the way, but um, pretty pretty well. I'll be able to now take and you know and just take and, and cut that down with a paintbrush, uh, cut it in, and be real careful with that. But the fit is nice and tight, and it looks nice, and it's all finished and it's done. Now you can see right under there where these these are just recycled floorboards, the ones that we used for our floor. That that little gap right there, I knew it was going to have that. I just didn't want to deal with two pieces. Um, and I wanted to put a little cord around in there anyway, so it worked out just fine. So you can see those gaps. So as you go up, um, that will all be covered up. But nothing prettier than than a clear vertical grain fur. I, I kind of like the contrast with the with the non clear vertical grain there. It's you know just kind of kind of I don't know. It gives it more of that a uh, little more of the rustic look than something that's super super fine. But that looks really really nice. So we'll take the beadboard up the uh into the hallway get rid of that hateful heavy hand brocade look and and make things and for some reason there's no audio i have no idea why nothing unplugged if it's electronics it'll give you problems anyway so i'm just talking about uh, we'll finish up here just talking about uh, uh finishing up the trims and i put the last coat on the floor in the hallway section there and doing the quarter rounds but it's uh, going to turn out really nice there it's mrs w's pantry to the left where she keeps her, her kitchen doesn't have a, a lot of cabinet space, so um, that uh, gives her the uh, ability to have to keep some stuff and not have to go up and down from the larder all the time. All right, well, I was going to run into town today and um, pick up the, the remaining panel adhesive and the last little bits and pieces, but the road is so bad and the weather is such a, a bad, we've got a storm warning here that I think maybe I'll just stay inside and <laughs> wait for it to melt a little bit. So I had something else that I wanted to do, uh, maybe we'll do tomorrow uh, for the next video, is putting together a dirt bike survival kit. What that means to me is um, we'll go on rides this summer where we'll be out uh, a long ways, uh, even some rides that are long as 80 miles, um, and that could be 30, 40 miles away from the, the nearest road. Um, so having a, a kit that uh, can, oh, you know, account for uh, as many possible situations as possible of spending the night out, um, uh, doing some sort of repair, um, getting rescued, all those things. There's a lot of thought that goes into it. So I, I might work on that today. And if I do, I'll, I'll share that with you in a video too. All right. Well, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on the next video.